was all because the Cultural Revolution stopped my career. It's done. She's an artist. When Alec Howe came to Canada, China was a very different place than it was today. It was a place that crushed the dreams of talented musicians like himself. So he moved his family here. Recently, though, he was invited back to China, only now he would go alongside his daughter Suzanne, a violin virtuoso herself. It was a special and most personal performance. Here's Mikhailo Prestupa with Return to Shanghai. Concert night in Shanghai, in the People's Republic of China. Two Canadians will perform Mozart Concerto No. 5, a music that not so long ago was forbidden. The conductor paces and the star violinist warms up one last time. Alec Howe has reason to be tense. He's been preparing his daughter for this her entire life. Okay, You know, I, I feel a pressure here that I don't feel anywhere else in the world because my father has had such a history in Shanghai. And everybody expects that his da da daughter is, is nothing short of the best in the world. And so it's a lot to live up to. This is the first time Suzanne Howe and her dad have ever performed together in China. A country where years ago Alec Howe's dream of musical stardom was stolen. And where Suzanne Howe has returned to take it back. Suzanne, or Yi Jia as she's known in Chinese, has been living up to her dad's expectations her whole life. They have a remarkably close relationship, one bound by a love affair with a box of wood with strings. This is what daddy does. <laughs> he gets very excited and he just runs, and especially things to do with wood, because he makes uh, bows and used to make my violin and everything. Alec Howe once led China's top orchestras in the early 1960s. The concert master of the Shanghai Conservatory. He was a man on the way up, even performing for Chairman Mao. Alec Howe was considered to be one of the best violinists in China, and his dream was to become one of the best in the world. But then something happened in China that made playing violin music dangerous. Almost overnight, new radical policies in China made it not safe for classical musicians. And Alec eventually fled from China. Yet Alec is still remembered. This violin maker invited Alec back to Shanghai to conduct a special concert and to bring his famed daughter to be the violin soloist. It's an effort to restore the lost tradition of classical music in China. And to undo the cultural damage of a past regime. And every day in the morning, they're brought out to suntan to um, dry the wood. This is how it all begins. In 1981, Alec brought his wife and daughter to start a new life in Canada. But the way little Suzanne would live her life was already decided on the day she was born. I take the hand out and open up the fingers 
and then I found little fingers short. Her mother turned her back. I know you're going to be very disappointed. I said, well, we're going to do it anyway. What Alec did was put her on a singular mission to one day become a star violinist. Their journey began in Thunder Bay, where Suzanne's mom and dad started musical careers. But all of Alec's spare time was devoted to his daughter, beginning at age four when Suzanne got her first tiny violin. A violin hand carved by Alec from an old maple fire log, using old nails and razor blades. But the gift was also a burden. The violin meant a lifetime of her father's discipline. I remember some very severe yelling and I was crying and eventually always got through it and, and came out the other end, <laughs> so. Actually her studying is not that difficult. Not that much tears that I've seen. <laughs> this is from yeah. his point of view. <laughs> yeah, it's no. quite, but my teaching point, especially to, to, to you is uh, I want you to move straight forward. One little tiny off the track, I'll bring you back. At age 12, that hard work got noticed outside Canada in New York by the late Dorothy DeLay, widely considered the best violin teacher in the world. Suzanne's parents couldn't afford to move, so the family started a ritual. I remember it'd be about 2 o'clock in the morning. My mom or my dad would come into my room and drag me out of, uh, out of bed. So we'd pile into the car and I had the entire back seat and I would just go straight to sleep. The drive from Mississauga took eight hours. The lessons in New York just two. And when it was over they turned around and drove eight hours back. This went on twice a month for four years. But through it all, Suzanne never got a compliment from her dad. Until one day, <laughs> I came home from Spain and I just won the international competition, the Pablo Sarasate, and my only way of showing him what I'd done was through showing him a videotape. I sort of, you know, cringed at the end of it, just waiting for a, a whole slew of, um, insults. He sat there and he sort of nodded for a few seconds and, and he looked at me and he said, that was all right. And I was so shocked. I was 19. I was so shocked I started to cry. Suzanne never stopped working towards the dream and Alec never stopped pushing. I closed a storm door, you know, one of those sliding doors. I slammed it into my first finger, my violin finger. And he made me practice. And he said, what if this happens before a big debut? What if this happens before you play with Toronto Symphony or New York Philharmonic or... Um, what are you going to do? You're going to cancel? The discipline taught Suzanne to push past obstacles, like at her Tokyo debut. It was the tail end of a tour where I had something like 20 concerts in 27 days in seven different countries. I was so jet-lagged, I had no internal clock whatsoever, and I was sick. I was passed out in my bed half an hour before. But when my wake-up call came, I somehow dragged myself out of bed, I got to the hall, I put on my dress, got my violin out, and went on stage and played one of the best performances of my life. And that is not something I could have done or anybody could do if they didn't have the work ethic that my father had, um, had given me.